Fast food workers have yet to meet their goal for higher wages in Massachusetts, but they're scoring many victories around the country. More importantly, they're changing the conversation about work and pay, and that will be the focus when the Fight for 15 campaign holds its national convention later this month. We'd like to welcome a member of its national organizing committee and a McDonald's worker from Dorchester, Darius Cephas, uh, thank you very much for being with us, Darius. <laughs> thank you for having me. Darius, talk about, uh, first of all, just uh, last night uh, in Jamaica Plain, you were at a revival. The main yeah. speaker was someone that many of us remember from the Democratic National Convention, mm -hmm. Reverend Dr. Joe Barber. What was that like? Reverend Barber, to me, is an inspiration. To me, he gives you that extra fight that's missing or that extra emptiness that's in you that you got to fill it with the spirit or faith because everything in this world is ran everything in this world is put on us and the way we make it through it is trusting our faith that we get through it so he gives us that extra faith that we just lack in some some type of struggles that we're in that we pretty much say you know what i'm i'm tired of struggling and i'm, I'm about to give up he gives you that that energy to say, I'm not going to give up this time. I'm not going to give up this week. I'm not going to give up never. I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep pushing. Well, I, I know that uh, just this year there, there was an attempt to get some uh, help at the State House to have a $15 minimum wage for fast food workers in Massachusetts. It didn't happen. So I mean, how, how do you feel at this point? How, how do you put that into perspective? It didn't happen now because to me, they feel they still feel some type of way because Boston's split in half about it. Because you have some Republicans some, that feel some type of strong way about it, saying that the wages are too high, and you have some Democrats having strong feelings about it, saying that basically we need a livable wage for the people, regardless of how you feel that your business is going downhill. If you want to pretty much run a business and you want to run a multi-billion-dollar business in the United States, you need to pay your workers a livable wage. And that's what I think the United States should say, and I think Boston should pretty much pass that now, because I think they should have passed it yesterday. One of the things I, I've also noticed, though, is that even when you don't uh, score the political victories you hope for, uh, there are some bits and pieces. Sometimes it's, it's a city in another part of the country that has a minimum. Yeah. Sometimes it's a company. That, so, I mean, it looks as if the, the, the wave is moving. Yeah, the movement right now is spreading across so fast and it's reaching so many people to the fact that they're seeing all these for low wage workers they're seeing all these conditions they have to take in all these things they have to follow but they assume that okay they're not people really to me they treat us like second rate citizens because they think that we choose to work in mcdonald's and we choose to work at burger king and we choose to work in dunkin donuts and so on and so forth but we have families to provide for we have families to feed it's not a choice we make it's what we have to do we're talking with Darius Cephas from the Fight for 15 campaign. Darius, you're the, the main provider in your family, aren't you? Yes, sir. Right now, um, I'm getting married soon. So right now, it's me and my fiance basically working now to provide for everything we got to do. But as we've seen, even getting married, it's a lot of money. So even trying the, the right way to find the balance between everything is really hard. But we're making it through it one day at a time. I rely on public assistance, and I'm talking to my public assistants now because they cut my food stamps. So I got to talk to them and try to get that back on, too. So it's a lot of stuff we got thrown at us, but we try to make it work. And, and already, you, you uh, even before this, you, you were helping uh, with, you know, when your, your mother was ill and you had younger siblings to, to support. So this isn't just a young single man trying to ha you know have money yeah. for a good time. Yeah, you got to... My thing is family always come first to me. And whether or not I'm sick, I'm not feeling well, or I'm just not up to the task, I have to take, for my family, I go to 110, the extra mile. If they go, if they go one yard, I go nine. Like that's the way I, it goes for me and my family. And I have to provide for them one way or another, regardless if it's my time, my money, or my efforts. Well, one uh, little victory, uh, uh, it's more than little for some people sometimes, is uh, that we now have uh, paid medical leave. So that, in other words, yes. it isn't just when you're sick, it could be when a family member is sick and you have to take care of that person. Yeah, that's definitely something that's important because when my mother got sick, I had to leave my job and I pretty much was fired. I didn't have no way of providing for anybody. I didn't have nothing to do, so I had to keep looking and try to find work. But that's a good thing because 
families, people have families and mothers have children. Fast food workers, mothers have children. Some of them are single mothers. Most of them are single mothers. You know what I mean? They have children at home that they have to provide for. And if that child gets sick and there's no one there to take care of them and they have to lose a day of pay, that day of pay can mean their whole week. That's, that can cut their whole week off, or that can stop them from paying a phone bill that month, stop them from putting food in their refrigerator, because the simple fact is that companies don't provide certain things and certain standards when, if you look up McDonald's on the internet, they say they provide all these things already, but I've never seen them. Fast food workers I've known never seen them, but corporate, corporate people seen them. Like they'd be like, oh yeah, McDonald's is perfect. It helps you get across the ladders and helps you build your stuff up and you're supposed to move on from there. It's, there's no clear five way of moving up from McDonald's. It's pretty much you work here, you work here, that's it. You talk about the difference between um, talking about problems with people um, at your workplace and, and talking about those problems in a national organization. What's the difference? Basically, if you think of your local problems, where it be um, gang violence and all this other stuff, and then the working force, is the, the poverty class is trying to work hard to become the middle class, and they try to do the right thing, but you only have two options, which is work hard and struggle, or struggle now and work hard later. So it's really no choices between those. So people work hard their whole lives to continue to struggle, and that makes no sense to me. Of course, when you, when you go to a national event, you, you get all these people from around the country. Yeah, uh, that like, right there itself is inspiration to a lot of workers because it's not only just saying, oh, I'm the one that's struggling this week. No, there's thousands of other people don't, going through the same exact thing you're going through. And it gives everyone a chance to build a support system, if you would say. Basically saying that I'm going through this over here in Boston and another brother's going through the same exact thing I'm going through in California. And we talk. We talk every day. And that right there helps you get through the day. That right there helps you make it to that extra, keeps you fighting. So it keeps us, our eyes on the prize, if you might want to say. Well, uh, I think also when you, when you build a movement, um, this is when, you, when you're getting together with people and you're trying to build some spirit. I can see you doing this. <laughs> is that what you're going to be doing at the convention? It's pretty much. It's just trying to get people to mix and mingle and get everybody on the same page because it means something. Because the simple fact is that that faith, that extra hope that you have that this is a possibility. It's no longer a dream. It's a possibility. It's no, it's no longer, oh, $15, please. It's $15, yeah, definitely have to happen in my city. $15, yeah, definitely have to happen in my state. You have people, politicians in powerful positions saying this. Like, yes, it definitely has to happen. We have to make a livable wage for workers. And this right here started off on an idea with 200 workers from New York saying, yes, we want 15 And nobody believed $15 was real. Nobody believed it would ever happen. And now here we are four years later and still fighting. But we have victories all across the United States. And we're going to keep having them. And, of course, the convention is going to be in Richmond. Yes, we have a convention in Virginia, in Virginia all, all the way down in Richmond. We're going down there in um, August pretty much to establish that fast food workers, and theoretically speaking, are modern day slaves, pretty much. If you would say, we get paid the dirt wages, we get paid for nothing to do a lot. We get paid nothing to do a lot. So we work hard every day to get nothing at the end of the week. And that right there is pretty much with modern day slavery, if you would say. And Richmond is the capital, was, was the capital of the Confederacy, was the birthplace of race pretty much birthplace of the confederate army and we're pretty much standing up and we're telling them that we're willing to march on that property willing to march in richmond and let them know that 
we see what they're doing. We know what they're doing, and we're willing to fight and keep standing up for what we believe in. And we demand a $15 wage and a union for all workers. Of course, you're also trying to exert leadership for the rest of us. And I guess the message here is not whom to vote for, but vote for somebody and make sure you don't just sit on the sidelines. Yeah, we were telling everybody, get out and vote, because it's something that needs to happen. Because if you fail as though, the, your vote doesn't count for the presidential election, but it counts locally. It counts for your city. It counts for who, you, who runs your city. Who represents you? We want people to get out and vote. We want people to understand what they're voting on. So go out to these meetings, read about it, learn about different things, because that right there gives you more power than anyone ever known. Thank you very much for being with us. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. From the Fight for 15 campaign, Darius Cephas.